Tranquility. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to the Transcendence Tier Finals. We've got a great matchup here, Havoc versus Wrap It Up. Now, we've seen Wrap It Up go against Second Chance, and we've seen Havoc go up against Orbit. Last week, we had Wrap It Up barely clinch out, almost giving up a reverse sweep. We saw Havoc really clean house through the Transcendence bracket. Now, I'm Light Rose, and we've got my, my pal right here, the Mallard, his first cast. Go easy on him. <laughs> it, it's, it's a it's a hard thing to do trust me now mallet i want to ask you about these two teams havoc we haven't seen much of them uh, but we know a couple things about them what are those things and how can they help us through this match yeah so uh three players on this team uh have played with uh tranquility uh teams before i believe uh havoc was the season one champion uh team with uh nerdables uh belzen and dunzo uh, those three players are very well known around the community. Um, they also have been like looking to be more well known around the open division. Uh, they apparently are within the top 16 teams, and uh, technically they're the only tier three team that is in tranquility. Yeah, that's that's crazy to have something someone big represented in this little community. Now wrap it up. We saw some crazy things from the last week. We we saw these off meta picks. We saw these great tank players, some really individual mechanical skill. What, how do they go against this absolute giant of a team that is Havoc? Yeah, that's honestly pretty interesting. The fact that you were running a lot of Winston Hogg. Uh, we even saw some like Gold, Sol Genji, Soldier, Ferret Tracer, those kinds of heroes as well. Uh, not typically in the like pro meta right now. I think it actually gives them a bit of an edge running this strange comp because uh, the other team's not going to be prepared to deal with it. You know, no, no one's probably scrimming Winston Hogg, so it might give them a completely different look, um, something that Havoc might not be ready for. Now we're loading up on Ilias. From what you've seen from these teams, who do you think is going to benefit the most on this map? Uh, I would say wrap it up because uh, this is a very... Um, open map there's a lot of different things to be a lot of different areas you could be taking fights uh, and they seem to thrive in a bit of chaos which is really easy to create on uh, these control point maps and we did see last map la last week actually ilios was the map five and wrap it up really easily took that but they've got a little bit of a tougher competition i mean nerdables courage dunzo courage is in as a sub for this match i did want to point that out uh, these are all, you know, Hall of Fame people. They're well known for being absolute monsters. How do you think we're going to see some show off performances from this to, from them tonight? Oh, I'm hoping. I'm hoping this goes to map five. I'm hoping that this is an absolute bloodbath between the two teams. Uh, I each team, given their all and seeing some really really close games, I definitely think we'll see some individual players pop, um, namely some of these DPS. For the teams we saw um, in the previous game, uh, Draft Dodger pop off quite a bit when he, I think he was playing the Junkrat. And I don't know. I think I think this will be a really fun match to watch, real back and forth. And now we're seeing Wrap It Up come out with that. From what we've seen so far, their signature Winston Hog, Genji, you know these kind of more off meta heroes, and Havoc already. They're just gonna try to get some poke but dunzo gonna be taken out already there's so much cc from that side and they're already up five to six and right there yang's gonna try to find a hog they're just gonna have to back up see what percentage they can get and dunzo he's gonna switch immediately off that wrecking ball towards that road hog but right now wrap it up really has control of the point courage the only one for havoc on it yeah i mean they only need the tank to contest to not give it up uh, looks like they're going to be trying to take fights off the point and just try to get these picks. But as we're seeing right here, looks like it's uh, 
going the way of wrap it up. Yep, Voltage and Draft Dodge are really trading picks. And right now, Havoc is just kind of stuck in a corner. Voltage and Amitra are just stuck near that lighthouse. Amitra tries to get away so close, but no such thing. And Velzen's just stuck upstairs as the time is ticking away for Wrap It Up. And this off meta is taking these teams by surprise as Draft Dodger has already got that high noon. Well, really, no ults are there for Havoc. Yeah, and we'll see probably a mid-fight Nano Blade too if they really do need it to close out this fight. Should be pretty interesting. <laughs> but already, once again, that CC comes out, but then the opposite side, Ojanger is taken down. Look at that assist by Velzen. And right there, that Hog is taken down. Draft Dodger taken down and flips already. Velzen is not going to survive DC, but it seems that Havoc is going to take this point back. Yeah, they, they will probably have the Nano Blade. They did not use the High Noon. Uh, there was not much of a commit into that fight, and they swapped off the ball into uh, an Orisa now on the side of the Wrap It Up. Yeah, it's going for somewhat of a match comp. These DPS are really going to be the, the difference maker in these fights. But that Widowmaker is going to have less of an impact as that Orisa Shield is just going to block so much sightline. But that High Noon is pop by Draft Dodger. Here comes so many ults on the side of Wrap It Up. That Nano Blade and a sleep oh, comes oh, oh, oh. out from Nerdables. That's what he's known for is these massive plays on Anna. And Dunzo's gonna get Nano. And here comes Havocs. They're back at it. And Voltage finds two. And this Widowmaker is already making such a difference with that Orisa down. And Havoc, 41%, already taking back what they've gotten. And they're just gonna slowly push wrap it up off the point voltage getting a headshot on the god slayer and tunzo finding a hook on the draft dodger and they don't want this fight to end they just keep going after him as it's yang and dc just trying to escape as much as they can but it seems that really havoc just want to keep this fight going forward yeah these staggers are absolutely insane this is giving them so much free percent with not another organized fight gonna be uh, for the red team coming out of here. It's, hit... um, that, that sleep though from Nerdables, that, that feels like a hard carry right there. That was, that was impressive. Uh, that's one for the books right there. You counter almost three ults with a single ability. It's absolutely amazing. And one of the biggest reasons why he's an all-star and well-known within this community. But there's a bunch of ults coming out. God, God Slayer gonna be getting close to that V-Trop, but he's not gonna be able to use it. As Velzen finds two, and his time slowly ticks off. Havoc, there's really only two left to touch on the point, seeming to take this round. God Slayer gonna actually have to use that V-Trop just for himself to survive a little bit longer. And he's just gonna try to skate all around this point as much as he can. But it's seeming a little bit futile. Things are gonna have to go extremely well. But as a death for Ojangira and a death for DC, it's not looking very good for Wrap It Up. Yeah, Havoc's really setting their own pace on this map. They're they're not letting Wrap It Up do anything that they want to do. It's it's pretty it's looking pretty dominant after that that one lost fight. Um, but I wouldn't count uh, I wouldn't count them out just Wrap It Up just yet on this map, considering Well is kind of the biggest. Uh, I guess it's like the biggest wild card map on Ilios. It kind of like, at least in my personal experience, if you win well, it doesn't mean you'll do well on the other maps because the other maps allow so much more freedom. It's so much more different. We're seeing these Widowmakers come out. Voltage. He's gonna have a little bit of an enemy here as Draft Dodge is gonna be onto that Widow. Something to try to shut him down. We're seeing Courage go onto that. Actually, go onto that Wrecking Ball as these Hogs are just gonna try to battle it out. No shields on either side, except for Ojingira's bubble shield, of course, but that's not going to do exactly too much. As they're going to try to initiate Courage, just going to just gonna hang out. He's going to try to get a slam onto something. These teams are just waiting to initiate their fight. As Courage is once again taken out before the fight even begins as something that can't happen. But once again, they're going to try to find these opening picks and these opening round picks like they did last time as Merc takes out Dunzo. That's both your tanks along with your Anna gone. This seems to be a repeat of exactly last round for Wrap It Up. Yeah, that whole fight, uh, Belzen and Yimtra, Yimitra were both in the uh, back line just disrupting Draft Dodger on his Widow, um, which just gave Voltage a little bit of extra room, but it didn't seem like he was able to really do a whole lot with it in that exact fight. Must have been the other team's great positioning. 
Yeah, and I think Wrap It Up is doing a wonderful job. What a shot from Voltage! And he finds both the DPS, not allowing me to get a word in. But right there, Wrap It Up just finds two, three picks. And that's Voltage Works done. But it is a 3v3 right now. Each, both sides can go either way. It's just a combat right now. Both one healer, one DPS, one tank alive for Havoc. And they're just coming back with these movements. And it's, it's back up again, 48%. And these ults are coming out for Wrap It Up. The B drop, the hog wild. And there it is. Velzen seems to get the nano, but it's really not going to do much. Yeah, before that fight started, Godslayer got a boop um, on uh, Havoc's Lucio and then a final one on uh, Voltage after he got those two picks. Uh, really, getting getting those picks kind of helped switch the momentum of that fight. Voltage got those two picks, and it really seemed like things were going to start spinning towards Havoc's favor, but alas, that did not happen. No one can hide you know, we're seeing these ult. We saw those ults come out from Wrap It Up, but you look at it, they've got almost four ult. And Mimikyu puts it onto DC, but DC's got a Nano Blade and he's gonna get antied. Not exactly the smartest decision. Nano Blading will anti on one, and Veilzen comes out with a Nano Blade of his own, and he's gonna find the Ana right now. It's just gonna get the Roadhog. And while you do lose the point here, you're gonna get about 99%. You're one fight away from taking it back. It's just a couple mistakes that you gotta fix for the next time. You're so close to taking it back. Yeah, one fight. They just kind of have to find out what their win condition is. Get some maybe like a nanode Winston. The Winston ult's going to be good for stalling. But I think uh, Havoc's going to be able to cycle some ults here to stay on this point for a lot longer than just one fight. Their Courage actually going to use that damage boosting bongos. As Nerdable's going to find a sleep on Godslayer. So we're going to wrap it up. Just really waiting for some sort of an initiating pick, maybe from Draft Dodger, DC, something to allow them to get in. But Yang is going to try to get a little bit of a flank here. He's going to go in the back line. But Dunzo, that dive is going to be crucial. That takes out Mimic and Draft Dodger, both gone. But right there, Velzen and Courage both down. It's a 4v4, excuse me, 4v3. 3v3. These picks on both sides are just coming out. As right now, Belzen and Nerdables are just trying to survive as much as they can. But that Ana and that Wrecking Ball are just so crucial in keeping this point alive. As right now, as just these so much death happening for Havoc, it's not looking really good for them. Yeah, I, that fight did not go the way I expected it to go at all. But it looks like they're coming in with these ults. Get a nice recon test here. Yeah, these ults gotta be big for Havoc. As right now, they actually don't have control of the point. So keeping this fight super long is not going to be optimal for them. But both Velzen and Yang are taken out. Voltage going to find the head of Giraffe Dodger as he's going to get dies by Ojanga, who is taken out. Ojanga refines two. And right now, with an Ana and a Wrecking Ball left, oh. it seems that it's futile for Havoc. We're going to 1-1. Right now, Lighthouse. Yeah, as we can see there, I'm pretty sure Wrap It Up was able to feel a little bit more comfortable on that map. Um, the DPS were really able to flip fights. Uh, what I saw a lot of time uh, with their previous game against Second Chance is that they actually got picked early in fights, but then were able to flip fights back into their favor. And we got to see an excellent representation of that there on Ruins. And definitely those maps are much better for the dive cops. You know, the Winston, that Wrecking Ball, we're seeing a lot of wrap it up on as five seconds are gonna tick away. We're gonna see who takes this first one, this first map in the Transcendence Tier Finals. And we're seeing really DC going that fair. We haven't seen much fair from him yet, but he's a hero that he's well known to play, but he's actually gonna be on the Genji. He's gonna be a little bit behind of his team and that might not be good, but Vel's gonna be anti that's big from Mimic. And that actually a mortality field gonna be wasted. It's, this really is not good for Havoc. You're wasting abilities, you're wasting, you know, movement. It's not well done. Yeah, they were actually 5v6 there because DC was swapping in spawn. And they, if they had they had known that, they probably would have been able to go in there with a little bit more confidence, a little bit more swag, and could have probably, um, that fight could have spun a different way. <laughs> right now, Jenga actually takes down both the supports. And the tanks, only one's left, and they're immediately taken out. Ojanger and gets that final blow. And Voltage, we're seeing Voltage get these opening picks almost every single fight. 
but Havoc doesn't seem to win them. What What's going wrong for them here? Uh, I, I'm not quite sure, honestly. I think it might just be split focus. I saw uh, the Doomfist and the Wrecking Ball both dive uh, up top with that BAP and Mortality field, but not a whole lot of follow-up from the other people on the team. I don't know if it's... Uh, I don't know if Belzen just got picked early there, seemingly by himself. I just maybe they're not as uh, they're not communicating as well as um, as wrap it up has been. We're seeing these these havoc players are going in by themselves. These doomfists, the, these wrecking balls, and they're getting immediately focused by wrap it up, getting picked off, getting taken advantage of, and something you can't really repeat. As we're going on fifty percent, the ults for wrap it up are looking. Really well done, as Mimic and DC are definitely looking for that Nanoblade combo, which they're somewhat known for, and here it comes. And he's gonna find two immediately, that anti is gonna do nothing. Three on Nerdables, and that's a fight ender. As really two ults used, you've still got both your tank ults plus the beat drop, and but the ults for Havoc definitely don't match the ones that wrap it up. Yeah, uh, Wrap It Up was not, or I mean, uh, excuse me, Havoc did not start out on the Lucio, and they were not able to farm Beat in time to have a defensive ult for the Nanoblade. Uh, so that Nanoblade was pretty much free, uh, just, you know, relying on Nerdables to maybe not hit his sleep. But, um, yeah, this is this is definitely still tilting Wrap It Up side, especially with this ult economy. And we're going to see Havoc going in, but they're going to leave Nerdables behind as Yang is going to find out, but they're going to be able to flip the point as both Annas are traded as just draft dodger. Right now, Godslayer getting close to death, and as both Lucius are once again traded, that Roadhog is going to be the only one to point as he's going to be using an ult. Might be just a little bit of a time waster as you're going to get those ult, that ult back pretty quickly. And Havoc, you got a chance here. You got to use it really well, though. You got to use it really well. Yeah, for sure. If they, they've got a few big ults coming up with the uh, grab and the nano. If they cycle their ults well, they will definitely still hold on to this point. Um, they do have the defensive ult for wrap it up. Uh, that will potentially counter the grab, but it does look to be a very favor favoring uh, Havoc. As ults are used multiple, that's not a word. But these trades are coming out. Yang is going to get slept. There's a brawl on the point between a Winston and he's going to get found out. But these trades are just happening so much. This seems to be a match of trades. But Havoc still has control of the point. So they're just going to be slowly ticking up. But Dunzo going to be found out by Draft Dodger. And Velzen going to try to survive. And he's not as Draft Dodger claims to. Wrap it up. They've got control of the point. 95. And there it is. So close. <laughs> But you've got about three left. You got a tracer. As there comes the grab. And DC actually in the back line finds two. And that's little shrivel of hope seems to be somewhat gone for Havoc. As they've almost got no bodies left on point. Yeah, that, that nano blade was insane. He's getting multiple kills every single time he presses Q. Uh, DC that is on his Genji. And it's just shredding him. I'm beginning to think that I'm cursing Havoc because every single time I say that they should be holding point for a little bit longer, <laughs> it seems like they immediately start losing the fight. So uh, I'm sorry to the, all the Havoc fans. I might refrain from saying that for the rest of the time so I don't give a, give them the caster's curse. Yeah, a caster's curse is real. <laughs> you know, we saw that last match. We're actually going to see Draft Dodger, which we actually, Voltage, we saw get a lot of consistent headshots, but Draft Dodger definitely popped off multiple times. But this match, this this map actually, was a lot closer than we thought it was going to be. And we see Wrap It Up take it. Was that really Wrap It Up strength or have it just somewhat faltering? Uh, I think it's Wrap It Up strength. Uh, their previous match, they won both control points. Uh, I think they thrive in this a little place where they can uh, have their own little bit of chaos. I think they want to play these split games where, you know, even if they're down a person, they can still try to like flip it using individual skill. I think um, as it goes on, it might we might see a little bit more of uh, Havoc being able to run their own game, but who knows? And we're going to actually see Courage being swapped up for Omega Ruby. Uh, Courage being a last minute sub. We're actually going to be going on Hanamura. We saw Hanamura last time. 
And if it serves me right, Wrap It Up did win that one as well. Somewhat of a closer match, but still it went in their favor. They still won with a somewhat commanding victory. Do you think we're going to see a little bit of the same thing? Or do you think Havoc... You think, do you think that they think that Havoc thinks that they know what they're going to do? You're going to need to follow that. Just... Oh, yeah. No, this is, this is some <laughs> Omega Brain strats coming out here. This is... They... They are like, oh, well, you know, Havoc saw what we did on the on the stream. So they think we know what we're going to do. And then they are going to prep for it. But then, I don't know. I'm getting too into this. But anyway, I think that Havoc is going to be prepared. Long story short, Havoc, Havoc will be prepared for what they ran last time, which I think is likely to be what they run again, considering it was such a, a good attack and defense from Wrap It Up running that i believe it was winston hogg still on this map mm -hmm. which is not traditional that's usually a comp that i would get flamed for running in you know my competitive games but... traditional for them <laughs> yeah um i think the, the what plays to their strengths is they kind of play it like quad dps versus goats they it, like um second chance was running a lot of brawl and they were just spreading out the fights getting picks and winning and not really caring about you know chokes or anything like that they were just working picks and looking for you know fight wins as opposed to just like brawling it out at a choke or in the areas which you know are traditional points of uh fights i don't know if that made sense but we're yeah getting there. <laughs> i mean i started i started this whole thing out with something that made zero sense so you probably <laughs> made more sense than me yeah i feed off of that though <laughs> <laughs> yeah you have, you need at least 130 IQ to watch a Transcendence tier cast. Oh yeah, for sure. We we outbrain ourselves here. <laughs> right now, we're actually going to see a Sigma Rhine come out on this Havoc defense. You need to put a really strong defense here to make a statement saying, you know, last map was a little bit of a fluke. And Duns are going to be holding that quarter and Sigma going to be holding that top area. But right now, Wrap It Up is just waiting outside. They're gonna be waiting for that end. There they go. They're just gonna be taking that top. And Sigma's just gonna have to back up. Genji taking the high ground as Draft Dodger. It's gonna get to half health and he's taken out by Voltage. As we're seeing Voltage get those heads again, but he's gonna get traded out. But Omega Ruby trying to get the res is not successful. And those in the back are gonna get so close to death. Is he gonna find the Mega? And he's not. Yang is finds Felzin and Dunzels and Nerdables are the only ones left as Nerdable is really gonna get pressured. It seemed that that split comp did not help them at all there. No, not really. And um, as I mentioned before, I'm pretty sure Havoc got the first pick that fight and it still spun into the favor of Wrap It Up. They seem to thrive when their backs are against the wall, when they're down. It's kind of impressive to me, honestly. It's, some, it's something you don't expect. And I think to expect the unexpected with this team. We're going to see Dunzo and Nerdables swap onto that Monkey Diva, really more of a divey comp, especially with that Genji. Some, trying something new to counter this as Draft Dodger finds the head of Voltage. Wonderfully done, but that's immediately outdone by Omega Ruby, who immediately reses Voltage. But Nerdables is just going to be pressured off that high ground by the Winston as Velzen, Dunzo, and Nerdables are just going to be all just pressuring that front line. And Amitra is going to find Ojangra. That's that opening pick. And are we going to see Wrap It Up come back? Um, it looks like this time they're kind of backing out, waiting. Uh, they did pop sights. Uh, Draft Dodger did pop the sights there. Gets that pick on the voltage. Maybe that signal a kind of a, maybe not a green light, but a yellow light to start, you know, poking more. Who knows? Who knows? This is, they're not pulling all the way out. They're still looking for ult charge and looking to flip these fights. We're seeing Voltage find Godslayer, but DC is immediately traded onto Dunzo. It's a 4v4. I mentioned that this is just a match of trades and who can win it out. But though both the Widows are out. Yang is using that Hog Wild, pushing everybody off his point. But it seems that Havoc are gonna are able to find the eliminations that need they need to win this fight. Yeah, they, they used the nano blade there and didn't get um as much value on it as they had the previous blades. But um, I think it's because of the way that uh, Havoc are playing. They're playing a lot more split. Um, they did nano uh, Nerdables there on the D.Va 
to make sure that he uh, he could stay alive and go in and pressure the rest of the team so they couldn't necessarily follow up with the blade. And I think that that was uh, that was the difference maker in that fight. And now we're just seeing a little bit, little bit of waiting time. But Velson, Velson's got that blade, but it seems like Godslayer's gonna have that beat drop, so it's not really gonna do much. And they're just biding their time as Ying's actually gonna go on to the bottom. He's gonna go for a little bit of flank. But right now, Ojang here are gonna go for a super meaty jump, but he's gonna survive because he's got that prime rage. He finds Amitra, voltage taken out by Yang. That's a 4v6, you gotta survive. And with that beat drop, Omega Ruby gone, that's both of your healers. And with the bomb thrown in, that bomb is not going to find anybody, it seems. That was just getting your mech back. Someone's got to get on point. And Whoa. the dodger says no thank you to Velsen. All we see in the kill feed is just red, red, red. Draft dodger, red onto blue. He is oh finding my. heads like nobody's business today. Yeah, this man, this man is on point right now. That is, that is impressive. Headshotting a blading Genji. I usually just get so nervous as soon as a Genji starts bleeding, I basically accept the fate that I am already dead. This man, though, <laughs> calm, cool, collected, pops the melon. Yeah, it might be a reason why his team is even here in the first place, as we've seen multiple big plays like that throughout this tournament style. Yeah, that's it's impressive. Uh, we saw Ojangira go up on... Uh, Kind of took a took a one v two against uh, Nerdables on the Diva and um, Yimitra on the uh, Ana, and he still came out with the pick. He used his primal, but he used the picks. I'm seeing a lot of individual plays that are kind of just in like I don't know how to say it, but individual superiority coming out where they're just they seem to be switching off times where they're hard carrying almost. It sounds like I don't know. I don't know how to put it. No, definitely. It's that's something we've seen from wrap it up. It's these mecha it's these individual skill, these mechanical skill. And you know, Winston doesn't have too much mechanical skill. I mean, except when you're punching, you got a big area. <laughs> Somewhat. <laughs> if there's mechanical skill involved in Winston, ojangir has got it. But, yeah, I don't know. I was told that I did have some pretty nice Winston aim the other day. So oh yes. <laughs> All aim, all brain must be a Winston main, I hear. That's what it exactly. is, right? <laughs> but Havoc's got to have a really big mountain to climb here. Three minutes and 15 seconds they're going to have to come back. So this first attack's got to be got to be very big. And Nerdables is just going to immediately go up onto the point as he's going to get hooked and nothing. He's hooked by Yang are just crucial and taken out. It's a big reason why they have him on that character. Yeah, hooked and cooked, you might say. It was a very good play. He waited till the personal bubble was gone, drew him in, in right into his lair and said, nope, not today, Nerdables. You're not gonna touch that point. But the rest of the team is still here on point contesting. And while we're really, Havoc is still here. It's just if, if, if Nerdables gets back in time, it's a 4v6 or 4v5. There's just so many trading in this match happening. I, I can't really ca know who's alive, who's dead. But right now, Havoc is still alive in this corner as Draft Dodger is making sure Voltage just stays in spawn. As they constantly are just going to have to fight 5v6 right here. As DC finds Vels and Yang finds Amitra. And with time ticking down, you got to have a big hold here as Draft Dodger looks again. He wants to find Voltage. Is he going to find it? Oh, not this time. Voltage puts the no you on a draft dodger, something that's a little bit of a motivation booster for Havoc. Oh, for sure. Yeah, draft dodger has been taking really, really aggressive angles. The entire time that uh, the tanks for Havoc were behind the point, draft dodger was up front looking for voltage, looking to get that kill, secure the kill. Didn't, not even caring about the rest of them, just knowing that if he wins that fight, he will keep the advantage in his team speed. No one can hide. We're seeing Havoc push up again. They do not want to get hooked by Yang. And there's the bait out. But Yang is going to get Nano. He's bringing out that Hog Wild. There's so much damage in such a little area as he's going to shred Omega Ruby, who uses that Valkyrie. That's both your support gun. And immediately it's a fight over. But Dunzo and Voltage do find both the DPS of Wrap It Up. It's just a little bit of a goodbye gift. Hopefully, it's something to push them forward in the next fight. Yeah, oh, I, they, um, 
They don't have the nano blade for Havoc, but they do have the blade, which they might be able to find something. Uh, they will uh, wrap it up, will have their beat in time, but they might still be able to get uh, get some work done with that. Here it is, Draft Dodger again. He's been so crucial in getting these first picks. And first pick again on the same party. The Shatter, is he gonna find anything? He does find Yang, but it seems that Yang is not gonna be taken down. As Veilson, while blading, is taken out by DC. But Yang is once again bringing down Hogwild on the Dunzo. And with a minute left, most ults gone for Havoc. It's not looking well. It's looking pretty bleak right now. Um... They did try to do the Shatter Bomb, that play. Um, however, I'm pretty sure, I'm not exactly sure because I wasn't looking quite closely, but I think God Slayer booped the bomb into a corner so that way um, it wasn't as effective. You know, bomb behind the Reinhardt, Shatter the Reinhardt, easy win. But I think that he booped the bomb, or maybe Nurgles just missed it, but I'm pretty sure he had booped the bomb to the side, uh, which allowed that like fight to swing in the favor of Wrap It Up yet again. Yeah, and once again, Giraffe Dodger is able to find Dunzo in these Wrecking Ball who just constantly gets CC'd and slept and flashbanged over and over again, and they're not able to succeed because there's so much CC on the side of Wrap It Up. And with only 10 seconds left, a Nano McCree, someone's got a touch, and it seems that Dunzo is, but with little men on your side, Havoc is just going to need to find some miracle to win this map back. Yeah, this, this is looking pretty bleak for them right now. It looks pretty much just a cleanup for Wrap It Up. Only Velzen's alive. I don't think he... No, he can't do not touch that point. That was a decisive victory for Wrap It Up. Yeah, definitely stronger than what we saw last week. You know, we saw Second Chance take it. We saw multiple rounds over and over again. But Wrap It Up held havoc on first point Hanamura. And that's something you got to be proud of. You know, shutting down these wonderful players. Dunzo, Belzin, Nerdables. And going into this third half, you can't you can't allow what happened last week have a chance at coming back. Yeah, I don't I don't know what was uh like I I noticed that uh Yumitra didn't have their nano for when Velzen had the blade. I don't know if he or they tried to use it to uh keep the fight alive on by nanoing a tank. I didn't quite see where that went, but you gotta think that you gotta hold your nano for the for the blade right like yeah you can melt through a sound barrier with that if you're focused enough on genji definitely but havoc's gonna have 10 minutes to think about what they've got how they're gonna adapt to it, what they're gonna change and how they're gonna come back from this 2-0 deficit that they're down from wrap it up and we're gonna see in 10 minutes happy halftime everybody All right, welcome back to Wrap It Up versus Havoc. We're currently, Wrap It Up is up 2-0 on Havoc. And right now, we're going to see Havoc, and they're going to choose Eichenwald. Now, Havoc had a little bit of a time to kind of reconsider what they're doing, you know, maybe switch some things up. Is there anything you thought, Mallard, that Havoc can really do to kind of change things up? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think, honestly, the biggest thing they could do is uh, maybe just start running... The boring meta resident sleeper DPS Reaper May, both of those counter Hog, both of those counter Winston, uh, those are giving them a little bit of troubles. They don't necessarily counter the DPS, but you know if you kill the tanks, who's going to contest point, right? So I'm thinking maybe they run the uh, the DPS that'll put us all to sleep, but you know might win some games. So <laughs> who knows? Definitely. I mean, last week we we saw a second chance kind of forced. Uh, wrap it up off of that hog Winston, hog wrecking ball, what we've seen so far this match, which Havoc really hasn't forced them to do. And I think that's something that they really can kind of force them to do. I, I, that's kind of redundant, but it's true. We're seeing Courage kind of being sub back in for Omega Ruby. We saw Omega Ruby play in that Mercy. Mercy is kind of... Mercy is... Is, is Mercy in the meta? Would you think? Not really. Uh, Mercy is okay. I think Mercy is perfectly fine. I don't think 
The problem that I see with Mercies is there's not a lot of carry potential with the Mercies. So I think that they would have a lot more benefit going with like the more of the carry supports like a, a Lucio who not only can carry with doing a lot of damage and area healing, but also with those defensive ults or like maybe adding even, um, who knows, like a second main healer and just giving the tanks an extra burst to stay alive. You never know. Mm -hmm. Like I said earlier though, Havoc haven't really given I mean, Havoc haven't really given Wrap It Up a reason to go off that Winston Hog, which they're so good at. We've seen Yang's hooks are freaking insane. They're fight winning. And Mimix sleeps onto these Wrecking Balls, Flashbangs, DC's Nano Blades. It's these individual skill from each of these players that allows them to win the fight. And if you put even like a little bit of teamwork into that, you could go Biles. Oh, for sure, for sure. I definitely like the comp I'm seeing from Havoc here. Uh, they, it seems like a comp that's gonna absolutely give problems to every single character that is on Wrap It Up's team if they execute perfectly. Yeah, I counter that. You counter that Winston, you counter that Roadhog. Your Blizzard goes through DC and immediately Voltage takes out DC. That wall is crucial, cutting off that support and immediately Havoc has control over this fight, taking out almost every single one. That was incredibly dominant. That was I they hardly did a a, a fraction of damage onto anyone on Havoc that entire fight. Yeah, we Love saw, to see it if you're a Havoc fan. 20 seconds. That fight lasted 20 seconds max right there. It's, it's crazy. And we're seeing uh, these all these nerdables already at 70%, but wrap it up is just gonna push that choke extremely quickly. But Yang is gonna be on that flank and he's gonna find Voltage and he's gonna be taken out immediately. That's when your main damage dealer is gone. Now Yang's flanks have been crazy, but Giraffe Dodger is gonna be taken out by Velzen. Both your McCree's gone. Once again, these trades, but Havoc is gonna allow wrap it up to take a tick. That can be big, but Courage, Finds Mimic and Gang is just gonna get flown to the sun by Dunzo's charge. And right now, this May is really causing a problem for Yang. He's not able to do too much once his hook is gone. But Voltage is gonna return. They're gonna find God Slayer, Ojangira, and nothing much lost for Havoc except a tick. Yeah, Belzen is not allowing Yang to have any fun right there. That kept him frozen that entire time he was on point. Did end up getting a tick, but I think that that's, you know, you've got ticks to give if you want to win games. You know, if you if you fight for every tick, you're going to end up losing a lot of fights. So I think that was a really good tick for them to give there. Uh, we're seeing an ult and Yang is just going to find, his hook is going to go into oh. the nether realm and going to find Voltage. And once again, that's your McCree gone, but Kurge is going to find Ojangira. And Kurge is going to have to ult, but, oh, and DC's barely going to escape that bomb. As these ults are being traded, and right now, wrap it up, it's gonna find something, but the shatter is gonna counteract both Yang and DC. And right now, Havoc is just so close to finishing this fight out. They're so close to getting encouraged, gonna find Mimic and Bolt to try and draft Dodger. And it seems they did clinch it to hold off wrap it up for now. Yeah, that, there was a lot of ults uh, invested there for wrap it up. They used the Nano Blade. Um, and I believe they used the whole hog as well, and they got nothing out of it. The male is so strong for CC, and also just completely zoning it, them off of the point. Well, that was a really good play for them all the way around. And right now, OJ and Gira is going to use that Primal Rage, but that May is just so strong in shutting that down, but they're going to allow Wrap It Up, probably not intentionally, to get that. OJ and Gira, you died, but you allowed your team to win that, and that is just... That's crushing if you're Havoc. Yeah, that's... Courage did, used his boosters to fly off point right there. Um, probably just to help finish off a kill and help heal, but it did allow the point to be given up. And little mistakes like that are fine as long as they don't compound into the entire map. And somewhat Havoc, what we've seen so far, that is generally a good hold, you know, from what we've seen so far tonight. Obviously, not, it's not indicative of their team. That's just so far. And right now, Yang is going to punch Yamitra to death. It's a one-punch man, one-hook man. He's just insane with his hooks, but Voltage going to be able to trade God Slayer 
right, out as draft charge is gonna get so close to death he's gonna get nano to able to survive but this this dragon's gonna be shot from what you usually would see havoc sign and right now these ults are just gonna use voltage finds two and mitra finds one on dc but velzen is gonna be taken out and right now havoc is just really just contesting the car as much as they can trying to take down some time that dragon might have been like a completely unexpected angle considering it was coming from the defensive side of castle instead of the offensive side very strange angle and it kind of caught the tanks out there and the offensive is coming online for havoc we're seeing that blizzard we're seeing that shatter and they're just gonna jump right in gonna split them a little bit velzen's gonna bring out that blizzard a little bit of a zoning ult and no picks on each side. Velzen finds him. Draft Dodger so close to death. He's going to be finally taken out by Amitra. But he's going to pay his life for it. As DC's frozen and taken out by Courage. And there it is. And they're going to stop. Wrap it up. Oh, but Yang is going to be on that card. Probably not very long. And there. They're finally going to stop him. A minute 30 left. Wrap it up has to take it to that second choke. Yeah, that was that was a very decisive fight. They did use the Blizzard uh, and the Diva Bomb. The Diva Bomb was just to remech. I really like that play, honestly. It's basically like giving yourself a second life. Um, so it kept them in that fight. Um, they, I'm not, you know, no one can say whether they necessarily needed it or not, but I do like that play from Courage. <laughs> but Ochangira's gonna do the exact same thing, except his team's not gonna be able to back cap this time. He's gonna be taken out. That May Freeze is just is so crucial. Taking out a Primal Monkey. But Velzen gonna find Giraffe Dodger. He's, Yang is just in the back line, not really helping his team too much. And it seems that wrapping up really right now, they're just somewhat split. Yeah, this they have been playing split, but then they've been getting picks for the most part tonight. Uh for some reason they're they're getting these uh, they're getting split, but they're not getting the early entry picks this this fight so far. Like this uh point, I guess I should say. So it's it's uh these fights are going in the favor of Havoc because they're a little bit more organized and actually playing together and able to blow up targets. Havoc gonna be a little split, but Giraffe Dutch gonna take out Velzen. That's a big part of Havoc his ultimate. And the beat drop, the bomb gonna find two, that's Yang and God Slayer. But Giraffe Dodger is gonna be able to find Voltage on a dead eye of his own. Now we're coming up into overtime. Dunzo's gonna have that shatter. He wants to find something. But OJ and Gira is gonna be nanoed, and OJ and Gira is gonna immediately block that shatter as Dunzo's gonna get so close to death. But Courage actually in that back line, he does find DC. Right now, Havoc is just going to be contesting that payload as much as they can. They want to bring back people. Velzen is 80% to that Blizzard. And they're just so close. OJ Gira is so close to death. And Courage is going to fight him out. And he's going to get unmacked. But Dunzo finds two. Draft Dodger and Godslayer. Yang, a last second. Hog Wild going to try to find nothing. And Havoc, that's, that's a well done hold. Stopping them in that second point. I think they, you patch yourself in the back so far for what you've done tonight. Oh yeah, I'm I seeing from what that defense was compared to the rest of the games, I see I see Havoc <laughs> doing really well the rest of this map. Nerdables was on fire. There was he slept a hog right next to the bomb, so the bomb blew up and murdered him. Then he nanoed the enemy's Reinhardt when they were fighting on cart last seconds in overtime. There's just little little tiny plays like that are really giving the edge to Havoc in these fights. And I definitely feel like what we're seeing from them right now is completely different from what we saw in the first two maps. Yeah. I mean, come on, man. You can't say, you can't say murdered. This is a T for team game. Oh, I'm sorry. Right? You gotta say eliminated. They, they, say they eliminated. turned, they turned uh roadhog into bacon. Very over. That's there you go. The ESRB rating just went down. <laughs> Thank you very much. But, but yeah, I, I love, <laughs> I'm loving what I'm seeing right now from Havoc. They're they're playing very well, coordinated together, and they're they're definitely playing their speed as opposed to the speed of wrapping up. But DC, we're gonna see him coming onto that far. Uh, I, this is, a, is this the first time we've seen DC go on that far tonight? It's the first time we've actually seen a far uh, in general tonight. Yeah, we have Voltage is gonna roll out on that Cree though. Uh, so as long as they're hitting their shots, that Ferrer might not be a problem. Yeah, he is very deadly with a big iron on his hip, I do have to say. And DC is going to be in that sky trying to rain as much 
death as he can from below, but Courage is just going to be able uh, to immediately negate those rockets. As right now, Havoc is just going to stay in this little room trying to find an opening, and they're going to go forward. And Nurdles is going to get so close to death, but Voltage, that McCree is so good at finding that Junkrat. And, but right now, DC Yang going to be able to find those supports, those tanks that are crucial to winning those fights. And with the res, and immediately DC is taking out that counter to you. This fight's over, even though it looked like, once again, Voltage had that opening pick. Yeah, it's... That's just kind of the comp that um, Wrap It Up's running. It's not, they don't need to play together. It's individual carry plays, so they don't really need to worry when they do get picked like that. Draft Dodger dies early, who cares? We still will, will like carry this fight. Someone will. And at that time, I believe it was uh, DC hitting a couple of nice rockets on the team, adding that pressure. Yeah, when you play such a really centered movement, that Farah is able to get so much ult charge and just so much damage onto these comps that are so focused around one central area. DC is going to be 84, actually, on that ultimate. And the only one who can really counter is Voltage, Courage, and Courage getting close to getting demacked. It seems he's going to survive for now. But DC, 95, Voltage does find the opening pick on a Jagera. But Courage is going to get nano. DC does have that barrage. I know he wants to find it. Yang is going to get slept. Draft Dodger finds a Mitra. And Yang, there it is. Here comes the tire. The tire is able to find Velzen. But we're seeing another back cap of sorts. This time for Havoc. Yeah, that was a really good play. They nanoed their... Uh, or Havoc nanoed Courage there. And Courage just went after the pharmacy. Made that so they were pretty much a non-factor that entire fight. And that really allowed them to not use the ults that they had, not the barrage or the Valk, to stay alive. And it really gave um, it gave uh, Havoc, the team with more point presence as far as uh, tanks and DPS go, really gave them the advantage just standing on that point. Yeah, DC does have that barrage. And he's just, he, there's so much that he's on. Here it comes. He's wanted, but it's going to get shot down, <laughs> slept, eaten. <laughs> but Voltage is going to pop that. Deadeye just to try to take him out of the sky, but OJ and Gear is gonna find the kill on him. DC is gonna find Dunzo and Havoc. They're getting close to the end, but Wrap It Up says not right now. Yeah, no, no kills with the barrage, but it did eat a lot of cooldowns and a lot of focus. So um, Havoc, or not Havoc, uh, Wrap It Up was able to uh, spin that fight, even though they got no usage out of their nano barrage. Well, no, no kills, I should say. They got a lot of use out. Yeah, gods are going to be forced to use that Resurrect. But right now there's just a f focus on the castle as Yang's going to use that Hogwild and he's just going to get shut down. Here comes the bomb. Now I don't find anything, but right now it's a 5v6 voltage. Once again, that opening pick they need to capitalize because this is the winning fight. But DC is going to find courage as he's going to get remake. And Giraffe Dodger wants to find something. DC is, but right now... DC is just raining so much on that payload. Here comes the Deadeye Voltage. He wants something, and he's just going to wait to look for it, but Wrap It Up's just going to try to hide. But Ochi and Gears, there's just a really bit of a brawl, but right now, Wrap It Up does find four, and with only two left, 245 left for Havoc to push that to the final destination. Yeah, this, they, uh, Havoc has Blizzard. I, I think that, that just spells out the way this game's going to go. You find a way to get that on cart, I think you win the fight. I I don't think uh, they have enough point presence with uh, Wrap It Up has enough point presence to be able to contest a Blizzard on point. I could be wrong. I've been wrong many times tonight. So <laughs> who knows? But I, we talked about the Blizzard. That Blizzard's gone immediately. But actually, Godslayer is going to use the Valkyrie. Interesting usage. He is going to be able to get the res, but they're going to have to back off for now. Yeah, that's that's an incredible pick. I, I don't know if that's luck, if that's ult tracking skill plus mechanical skill equals kill the May. But that 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 was the win condition that fight. Just make sure that May cannot walk outside of the doors of the, of these buildings. And the longer that wrap it up keeps Havoc off the payload, the more time that they have to counteract a fight that Havoc might win. And they're just gonna push right up through castle. 
and they're gonna try to find much, but Voltage gets the opening pick on Draft Dodger. I don't know how much I've said this time, but Velzen is gonna bring out the Blizzard. Velzen finds Yang. Own Jangera is gonna counteract that for the kill on Blizzard. But right now, a, bl a, a Barrage is gonna be brought down. That's gonna trade one. You gotta cancel this res, but it does not happen. You just gotta push him off the payload for 0.5 seconds. You're so close to taking this out, and this bomb is gonna be not big. But DC finds courage, and there's so much bodies on the payload for Wrap It Up. Your victory was so close for Havoc. But they allowed Godslayer to get the res on DC, which was absolutely crucial. That was, that was very close. The Winston bubble was there to block damage, and Courage did dive in and try to boop, but the wall stopped his boop from being completed, and that res was able to go through. Uh, that was truly unfortunate for Havoc. Belzen did build up 70% to another Blizzard in one fight, though, so that's looking pretty good for Havoc. <laughs> and they want to take out Yang as they're going to solo shatter him as Voltage <laughs> finds DC. And here comes the Deadeye from Voltage. Voltage is... he wants something, and he's able to find Ojangira. But both main tanks are out for both teams. This seems to be a winnable fight for Havoc. As Yang is going to be nanoed, but a res, that's what that Mercy gives you. And there's so many trade, but Nerdables is going to be up high. He needs to survive this. As right now, it's just, this is the last fight for Havoc. They need to win this. And it seems that right now they do have the eliminations. But Draft Dodger, he's going to be able to find Velzen from the grave. You just need to take out the Winston. You're so close to winning oh. it. And it's, oh, the it's, oh, it's so close. You got to clench your buttocks. As right now, wrap it up. Are bringing people back from spawn, but Courage is going to be taken out by Giraffe Dodger. And right now, this Symmetra Teleport is just going to be able to... And right now, 0.14 is so close for Havoc. And they're just going to have to throw as much as they can on the payload as Voltage is down. Voltage finds Ojagir with that Deadeye Bells and finds CC. Whoa! I can't tell who won! Oh, <laughs> Havoc! I... Oh, Havoc! Spin to win! Oh my gosh. I don't think you're going to find a closer last fight than what just happened. That was crazy. I, I definitely thought Wrap It Up was going to be able to out trickle right there, considering they had the Sim teleporter from uh, from spawn initially and then uh, up into the high ground, just giving them that extra presence. But my lord, that is a very, very close fight spinning in the direction of Havoc. Havoc is not going to let this game go down in a 3-0. They don't want to be looked. They don't want to let the people down like that. And right now, Wrap It Up is actually going to pick their map for the first time this map. My heart's beating so fast right now, Mallard. Yeah, that was, that, that was intense. Overwatch at its best right there. Honestly, when you see those fights... When it comes down to these moments, there's not a huge amount of clutch moments in Overwatch, but when that's when it's ticking over time, it's 2v2 on cart, and people are sprinting back, that's when it matters. And that was an incredible fight for Havoc. They they had enough ults, they were able to deny point very ever so slightly, and it just it just barely tilted in their favor. RNGesus blessed them in that map. Whew. Definitely. Oh my gosh. But Transcendence tier, that's what we're here for. This tier is not capped. You just got to have an average of a certain point. And you got the best of the best right here. And that's what we're getting. We're getting the best of the best. And Wrap It Up is going to be choosing Havana for their point, for their map five, for their map four, excuse me. Havoc definitely wants that map five. But wrap It Up, you got to get yourself under control. You can't allow a reverse sweep. Because, gosh, people just, people meme the ever-loving crap out of you. Beep, beep, that reverse sweep. Reverse sweep. That is, and yeah. Oh. Definitely. Second chance, I know, I know who second chance is rooting for right now. They want their storyline to be completed in Havoc's eyes. Yeah, it's just, oh, what a, I'm, I'm still, I'm still in all over that play. That was, that was intense. I love that. I definitely think we'll see. We'll see the Cree in May. Definitely the May again. That I think I think Belzen was getting way too much value on that May. Not that he's not good at other heroes, but the fact like May. You know this might be a little controversial, but May is 
horrible to play against, in my opinion. A lot of people might not feel the same way, but ah, I, I know. personally hate playing against me. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not too popular of opinion. I personally really like having all of my abilities taken away and not being able to do anything. Like I think the Overwatch community agrees with me on that. Yeah, like why not why not just give every every character a freeze ability or an EMP ability and just you know, let them run wild. Perfect, perfect. I mean, that's what they did, like, a year ago. Give everybody <laughs> CC. Just join Blizzard's balancing team, Mallard. Uh, I'll be I'll be the most loved balancer there is. Yeah. But oh. right. Oh, what is this? That wrap it up is going out. They're going to bring out that Bastion. DC is on that Lego Bastion. You know, he got that from a little bit of a challenge a while ago, but... That Baptiste is just going to give him so much help to work with. But Giraffe Dodger finds Voltage as Yang is going to be a little, get a little bit of a free reign to just be in that backline and find those hooks like he does Velzen. Have it. You got to back up here. Velzen, and, excuse me, Courage is just in that backline. He wants to die. And Havoc, they're, they're giving themselves time to back up. And right now, but you got to have something to counter this Bastion comp. Oh, excuse me. No, it seems like Rapid Up's going off that Bastion comp. They just wanted to get out the door. Yeah, just blast through the brawl comp that was sitting on point, break out of that initial area, then it's only one fight needed to take this first point. And I think they wanted to spend as little time as possible at the at the doors there. Mm -hmm. A common shot on Havoc on Havana is just waiting at that front door, allowing that payload to not move, giving yourself so much time to back up. But right now, Yang is gonna try get a flank hook, but it's not gonna do enough damage to take out voltage. And right now, Draft Dodge is though able to find your both Roadhog and the Ana down as Havoc is just gonna contest this payload as much as they can but that's your main healer gone it's nothing much you can really do as Rapid Up's just able to push forward even without their off tank yeah uh Draft Dodger had a really nice off angle there up on top of the Cafe del Sol sign um Havoc came out of the building and he was completely um perpendicular to their shields so he was able to do quite a bit of uh damage and hit a bunch of free shots from that angle and Shatter is going to find Velzen and Courage. Velzen is going to get so close to death. But a beat drop gonna, from a meat drop probably to save with as Draft Dodger. He is just going to try to find an angle. And nothing much going to come from the Dragon. But the Shatter going to be blocked by Ojin Gear. Here comes the bomb. And the bomb finds nothing. But we're seeing Draft Dodger take out. Nerdle's taking out its main healer once again. Seems to be doing a very good job of focusing that. But both Yang and Draft Dodger are gone. This two of your main damage dealers out. And it seems that Wrap It Up still wants to fight this fight. Yeah, Nanoing the Reinhardt there, they're, they're still going for it. I guess they have about equal spawn advantage at this point, at, at this point in the map, but I I would have been screaming at my team to pull out there, but I guess I don't usually play with people as high as skilled as, <laughs> as the people that are in this match. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, OJ and Gira is going to be found out by the freeze, but Draft Dodger once again is just going to find a trade. I want to see his critical hit accuracy for this game. It's insane. Same with Yang's Hog Wild kills. They have just been pull him in, push him away. I don't know if that's a strat, but Voltage is going to get Nanon, and he's just going to spin as hard as he can. He's going to find two. He wants to find three, as only the tanks are on the point for Wrap It Up. Massive ults for Havoc. Yeah, they were... They were making sure Yang was not having fun there at the end. Reaper, Reaper, May, Ana, all three just can blow up a hog. He was frozen, he was anti, basically eating every single ability they have. And with good reason, this man is hitting max range hooks off cooldown, it seems. Yeah, but we're seeing Yang actually go off that hog. It doesn't even matter, though, as Ojin Gira finds a 4k immediately bypassing that Reinhardt, and it allows Wrap It Up to push so far, and they're going to take this first point. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a big group up here for uh, Havoc. They do have Blizzard. I think they'll tr probably try to use it aggressively, uh, deny point. There's not a whole lot of ults for uh, Wrap It Up, but that doesn't mean they won't win the fight, as we've seen multiple times. Oh, oh right, yep. Dodger <laughs> finds two and Nerdables is just not having a fun time. Somebody's just got to pay his coffin fee at this point. He has died so many times. And it seems that Wrap It Up is doing such a wonderful job of taking out that main healer. Yeah, it's, Ana is very hard to play into sniper comp. Gotta be playing corners. 
and even that sometimes is not enough because you're the most important person on the team. Uh, Nerdables actually swaps over to Brig here. He's tired of he's tired <laughs> of these uh, <laughs> these headshots coming in, bringing up his own shield and saying, "Hey, we're just gonna try to run into him and blow him up." It takes you a, it takes a little bit of that uh, heal away, but it gives you a little bit of that area damage, area heal, area damage. But both of the rides gonna be traded out, and right now that's a draft dodge taken out. That's a massive weight off your shoulders. As Mimic is taken out, it's going to be demeked. Recruit taken out, and there it is. Havoc going to be able to push back. Stop Draft Dodger, because he's been on a tear lately. Yeah, man, this is... Oh, they're switching up comps again for uh, Wrap It Up. They're on the Moira. Uh, that's, that's a pretty good switch, in my opinion. When you're running against Brawl, because there's so much damage done to an area with Diva's spread, Reaper's spread from, you know, unless you're, like, right up and in. He has a decent amount of spread in the Ryan Hammer. You need a lot more healing to come out. And I think I think that'll be a, a good switch for them. They'll be able to keep their tanks up and going for a lot longer. We're seeing Havoc gonna engage, wrap it up on this high ground, and wrap it up's just gonna have to back up to the payload. And you give it your Havoc's allowed wrap it up to get somewhat space. And that shatter is just gonna find too. It seems that it somewhat went through the shield, but that blizzard is gonna be able to find OJ and Gira. And right now Kurz is actually in the back line. He's still alive, and those heals are going to be big, though. But Yang, is the bomb going to find anything? No. And that's an ult. That's just a little bit of zoning ult right there. But Draft Dodger finds Voltage. Man, Havoc, you talking a lot of crap for somebody in Draft Dodger's sight lines. Yeah, this is... Draft Dodger was uncontested on top of that boilers the whole time. It wasn't... They were looking to blow up the tanks. Havoc's looking to blow up the tanks everyone that's on the ground first and then worry about all the all the other people which is working out for him it, and that draft dodger gets picks at the end of fights but after they already lost i don't know right now we're gonna be heading into overtime that dragon not gonna find anything as the beat drop is just to use to kind of keep havoc alive you've got that moira only left and as Draft Dodger's taken out, it's just a race to that payload. Find as much as you can, but sadly, God Slayer's beat drop is gonna not be able to find Mimic. And it really just gives OJ and Gear up, but the Shatter is just gonna destroy any hope that Rapid Up had of pushing this payload any farther. Yeah, I really, really liked that beat drop at the end there uh, from Yumitra. I know it's, you know, the end of the map or whatever, and so you just kind of toss him out, but I think this was more calculated than that because there is still two one-shot heroes alive for wrap it up and that beat gives them extra ability to just contest and blow everyone else up on point i keep saying blow them up but that's kind of how you run this comp when you run like a brawly comp it's just you don't want to take long drawn out fights you just kind of want to go in and end it as quickly as possible so and i it think seems, it kept yeah, people alive i don't know it seems in these long, drawn-out fights that you were mentioning that Draft Dodger is able to find his perfect angles and find those heads. We've seen that. We've seen the red arrow after his name tag so much tonight that you gotta put pressure on him, make sure he doesn't get the sidelines that he wants, and keep these fights short. Yo, for sure. You you do not want Draft Dodger to get comfortable. This is this is. Uh, probably going to be a hard first point attack for Havoc uh, because Draft Dodger can set up. It's a, it's a little bit of a jungle gym for Widow, being able to set up on many different off angles, a lot of defensive high grounds here. It's going to probably be a little bit rough uh, if he gets comfortable and starts getting in his groove. This man has been absolutely lasering Havoc tonight, but... Honestly, I think it was uh, this this comp choice was a really good like comp switch for Havoc, and it's really given them the advantage. That May is just absolutely massive at shutting down some of Wrap It Up's crucial players. We're seeing Yang on that Zarya finally getting somewhat off that you know Hog. I don't know if it's comfort fit. It's just an absolutely crucial pick that it's just just you're getting those hooks, but you don't have that now. But you have those bubbles. You have that somewhat of a personal space kind of area of denial. Right now, it seems that Wrap It Up is somewhat given havoc this kind of area, but Trap Dodge is gonna get slept. And right now, there it is. There's the engage from Havoc. And right now, they're just staying alive right now. No picks on each side yet. Yeah, with uh, Wrap It Up's comp, they want to be running as slowly as possible. 
Genji and uh, Widow, you just want to be waiting for these picks to come in, whereas um, Havoc's going to want to try to end the fight quickly and tear up the tanks. They're, they don't need to wait for their DPS to get picks because the DPS are weak. And here comes the Nano Blade, and he hasn't found anything yet. He does find Voltage, and right there, three, four for the DPS. As right now, it seemed that Havoc did have the opening pick, but the absolute damage that was coming from DC's Nano Blade was just too powerful to overcome without somewhat of a beat drop. Yeah, that that Nano Blade was farmed incredibly fast. That that is that is a masterclass. I wish my Genji's farmed blades that quick. I feel like I'm always sitting on Nano for the three fights, waiting for them to get their shurikens in. Yeah, don't we all? But this may <laughs> this may well actually gonna be <laughs> crucial as courage. Eats Yang's grab as the Shatter finds four. As they're able to capitalize, gonna be able to find DC, but Giraffe Dodger immediately trades it out on Voltage. He has been absolutely key, as he has been key most of tonight. But right now, Havoc is gonna be somewhat pushing up his Draft Dodger! Draft Dodger! God! Yeah, Courage went up there looking for Draft Dodger, uh, but Draft Dodger dropped off a little bit more of an aggressive angle. Courage was looking around behind, Draft Dodger got behind, and uh, behind uh, Havoc just saw two open heads. Somebody get this. Somebody bring Kefri in here. <laughs> get get, get, get the point We need that here. <laughs> I'm serious. Trap Dodger. He is absolutely insane. I don't think I've seen him get a kill that's not a headshot. In the entirety that I've seen him play, that's not a headshot from these hit scan players that he's played. They're just crazy, but they're able to capitalize on somewhat of a cheeky personal. Oh, and the Shatter is able to find Dunzo, but ults coming out, so many ults from Havoc, we're seeing almost all of them come out, but Dunzo is able to farm it out, as right now Havoc is able to find almost five of what it just of a wrap it up player. Yep, just a speedy frog boy, and just a <laughs> speedy, speedy British girl are left to fight Havoc, get someone what they can, it seems that Havoc is gonna push this with about 45 seconds left. I really, really like the uh, the call to just kind of use a bunch of ults there. Capping the last few meters of a point, absolutely the hardest. It's, it's such a good defensive advantage for a team, and so you kind of have to just sometimes burn ults that you didn't think you were going to need to use, and just, I don't know, it, I, I like it. Now they have enough time. They're in a, they're still in a one fight territory here with spawns, considering where they held them. Just get a couple more ults and you can win. Yeah, with how close that objective is, that is big, but DC is able to find Voltage before the Nanoblade even comes out, and he's able to find Ooh. four, and there it is. You want to get as much leverage as you can right now, because right now it's really, like you said before, one fight territory. Havoc can get these ultimates, they can just ram their fist right into Wrap It Up and take this map. They've got about a two minutes and three seconds left to hold this. Yeah, looks like uh, Wrap It Up's got the grab, though. If if Courage is as hungry as he was a few fights ago when he ate it, though, they might not be able to get any value out of it because it'll just be sitting inside of the defense box. Havoc's just going to take a little bit of a flank territory right now as Dunzo Ooh. brings down the hammer, finds three, and we're going to see a trade comes out from Dunzo DC. Courage going to get slept, but he's going to get Nano just to try to save his life. And Draft Dodger was so close, but Courage able to find Yang. That Nano is just big Courage! And he's able to- Courage! Oh. And we're seeing a big name other than these kills and these kill feet other than Draft Dodger tonight. And right now, kill the Lucio. You've got so little to go from Havoc. Just throw yourself on the cart right now from Wrap It Up. Yeah, Courage absolutely fragging. This man is insane. They have Blizzard. I don't see any reality unless, well, for a freaking, uh... <laughs> for uh wrap it up to win this and this is so many olds coming out but it seems that they're all really for havoc courage <laughs> finding a two voltage finding two and we're going to a map fives oh my <laughs> god i grabbed lucio the only person on cart there pushing it in <laughs> reverse sweep to electric boogaloo perhaps we're we've we've talked about how powerful the, uh, wrap it up is on these control points. Do you think Havoc has a chance right now of beating them on this control point? I think they have a definite chance here. They've got they've got the momentum. They've won the last two maps. 
they seem to find what's uh what was wrong with um what they were doing before and they're exploiting wrap it up's weaknesses i don't necessarily know what those are but i assure you havoc does he could have said the same thing about second chance last night i'm just saying yeah okay all right i'll give you that i'll give you that but i don't know i these last two maps seem to be very very dominant mm -hmm. i i guess i guess second chance where do they win it? i don't know i don't quite remember but these last two maps they stopped payloads midpoint wasn't last like last little areas of points it was like right in the middle and i think that that shows just absolutely i get oh okay whatever they they were close on icon i'll give you that i'll stop trying to defend my case this is <laughs> this is gonna be a slugfest but yeah. i don't think it'll be uh i think it might spin the way of havoc yeah it seems it's so much different from these first two maps you know we saw wrap it up like completely dominate on king of the hill we saw them cap uh hanamura with so much time to defend first point and now we're seeing them not even cap these last two maps and it seems that right now it's Nerdables, these Havoc team, they want to win this. They want to, I mean, they already really have a strong feeling going into this first season, these, ugh, these first week, you know, words are hard if you don't know, <laughs> this yeah. first week, but uh, they want to make sure that they've got the community's appreciation because right now they were the clear favorites to win this. If you look in the predictions, Havoc completely dominates over wrap it up in the predictions and wrap it up definitely have surprised some people with their you know crazy plays their absolute dominant mechanical skill but havoc needs to finish this one out yeah they looks like we're going towards nepal i do like that pick if it was havoc honestly i know we saw uh we saw them win nepal against second chance but when uh when havoc's running these brawly brawly boy comps i definitely think that these maps are a little bit more favorable for Brawl. I'm just very ec excited to see if we will see a reverse sweep. I know Second Chance is looking on. If anybody's seen Star Wars, Havoc is I will finish what you started. And that <laughs> is a reverse sweep against Wrap It Up. Beep, 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 beep. Definitely. Reverse sweep. Uh, Mallard, Mallard, uh, you, you know a couple things about our reverse sweep, don't you? Yeah, a little bit. I'm a little bit. I guess we were in the yeah. final four. It wasn't quite reverse sweep, but I'm going to tell you, as soon as you get to that last map, after you've been fighting back to get them, it, it's a completely different mood. You're down 2-0 like they were. They're probably thinking, oh, we have to win, we have to win. And then you're a little bit more pressured. And then you start winning maps and the pressure starts to release and i'm thinking by this time havoc's like oh of course we're gonna win this easy game easy life but i don't think i don't think it'll be that easy but i'm just from a person who's been in a situation much like that your confidence is through the roof if you won the last few maps yeah ain't gonna be back on that road hog we want to see that excuse my language but it is true a fat hooker <laughs> Is Havoc is going to take this point, and Yang is going to get found out on the side. Immediately dope, but Velsen actually left astray. And DC is going to take immediate advantage of that. But Giraffe Dodger finds Amitra. As right now, it's just a battle of the trades. Once again, I mentioned Dunzo going to find Ojangira. But the DPS for Wrap It Up absolutely dominate this first fight. Yeah, that, that fight, they wanted to go for the slowest person. The slowest person on uh, Wrap It Up. So they went and they took out Yang, who's not only the slowest person, but he's also been hitting some absolutely major picks. But they uh, they were getting a lot of damage thrown into him from behind, where like all the DPS were towards like the elephant statue. So it, it was kind of unfortunate. They did get the opening pick, but they kind of got a little bit split focused at that time by the enemy team. We're seeing that split comp come out really from wrap it up but havoc is just so focused around a central point dunzo is their anchor he's so big but he's gonna get oh you gonna get frozen and flung to the side as courage able to find it but havoc able to flip this with not really much contesting from wrap it up yeah the the tank presence is a little bit weaker um just because of the comp they're running hogs kind of a flank character and winston winston can get you know shredded by this may or the Kree if you're uh not too careful 
<laughs> DC's nano blades. I uh, actually wasn't a nano blade. It was just a regular blade. But he doesn't really care. He still finds two and is able to flip it once again for wrap it up. Is they're gonna near fifty percent? Yeah, this DC on anything but Genji. I'm not gonna say it's a throw, but I just his Genji is so fun to watch. It's he's getting so much value, so many kills with his blades. It's just it's impressive. Yang, <laughs> from Yang not gonna connect as Voltage is gonna find DC out as ults are gonna start coming out from Havoc. As right now, they're just gonna take control of the point. Yang does find a hook on Velzen, so that's a Blizzard out, that's a Freeze out, that's a big part of your defense out. But right now, really only Yang is left as he is gonna finally be shot down. As the Winston and the Genji are just gonna contest this point for as long as they can, gonna near around 80% as Havoc should flip this point and give them the confidence they need to win this map. Yeah, Yang's play there was actually incredible. He came up behind and uh, hooked the Mei mid-freeze on um, on Ojanger on that Winston, giving him enough time to be unfrozen before there's too much damage coming to kill him, allowing him to use his primal and stall out that point. But we see these crucial ults still online for Havoc. We're seeing these Blizzard, we're seeing that Shatter. And Dunzo, you know, an absence of a real main shield is big, but he's just gonna shatter two Gods there and Ojang here, who are immediately taken out. But Velzen is just, once again, he's just out of the fight very early, which seems to be really a pattern for this really map in general. Yeah, Draft Dodgers kind of in the spawn for Havoc. Uh, Havoc spawn right there. That was they just love playing this extremely split style where you're just hitting from so many different points of attack. Sun Tzu would be proud of how many of how these uh how wrap it up is taking their fights. The ults Velzen still got that blizzard. He needs to be alive to use it. And I know he's definitely thinking that. But I know who's thinking that he wants to be he needs to be dead, and that's Yang. Yang's got that hook primed and ready for a special somebody, and he's going on that flank. He wants to find somebody. And Havoc really isn't... Inertables is in that backline. He's going to get hooked, but Yang, the anti, is going to do nothing. He's going to do absolutely, actually everything as Voltage does find Yang. Here comes the Blizzard that is going to find Ojangira, but the High Noon from Voltage finds Ojangira, who is could do absolutely nothing about that. Three on the point for Ojangira for, for wrap it up with the... Nanoblade is gonna get shut down. That's huge for Havoc. As only the Lucio survives, a hog is gonna try his best just to get back to point, and it seems that he cannot. Havoc is insane. I just have to say it. This man, he hit two sleeps that fight. One from a sightline I didn't know he had, which was on the McCree, who was made walled off, but still posing a big threat while using his high noon. And then again on the nano bladed Genji in the last few seconds of the point, which gave them a, enough of a stun for the entire team to just blow him up within a second, giving him no value. I'm I'm amazed. I, I can't believe this. I mean, he is a an amazing support player. He, there's no doubt about it. And there's a reason that, you know, he's been in this top 500. He's been on Trank teams that won it. Havoc season one won it. Nerdables was a crucial part in that. And he's helped actually coach these Trank teams that have gone really big places. You know, they've gone far in the playoffs. And now it seems to be that he's a crucial part of this new Havoc team, the season four Havoc team that are looking to dominate the transcendence ladder. And immediately right now, he's just gonna find a sleep on Mimic, but Yang hooks onto Voltage. As right now, DPS are just both out, Velzen and Voltage. I think you gotta back up, you gotta back up if you're Havoc. But right now, Dunzo is able to find Giraffe Dodger. It's, it's right now, it's a little bit of a winnable fight, but it, you just gotta back up. You've got people down and you're split. Back off right now if you're Havoc. Yeah, you just play this slow. You, you don't get greedy, you don't, you just keep up a little bit of map pressure while waiting for your DPS to come back and take this fight. And Velzen just gonna get caught out. Ooh, Courage almost finds the boop on OJ Gira, but it's really not gonna be much as OJ Gira is taken out. But Yang is gonna find the opening that Draft Dodger needs to take out Dunzo. As right now, Havoc is so close to taking that point back, and they just need just a little bit more. God Slayer, so close to death, and there it is. Nerdables, Velzen gonna find the two that they need to flip the point. That's only about 30% for wrap it up.
Yeah, Havoc, Havoc is going to have nightmares tonight. They're basically playing Outlast right now with Yang popping up behind them out of nowhere, hooking them and like just dealing so much damage and just shredding through them. It's, it's so crazy to see. <laughs> and there it is. Both the DPS. Vulture's going to be able to pulse bomb a Sleeping God Slayer, but Giraffe Dodger going to find, like I mentioned before, so much before a trade. But that's really not going to do much havoc. They're just going to push forward, and they're going to gonna overtake Rapid Up's percentage that they've got. And it seems that they're really in control for taking this match. Yeah, this is, they're looking really good. Uh, they don't, there's no, like, extreme winning combo uh, for Wrap It Up. No Nano Blades, Grab Dragons, anything like that. Not saying they won't win, but there's, there's none of these combos like the Nano Blade that they've had the previous maps. But Yang and Draft Dodge, the deadly duo, are just going to be able to find but Draft Dodger. Courage just throws a nuclear bomb. He's just angry. But even with the picks that haven't got it, Wrap It Up flips the point. And they're just going to steamroll right there, right their way to taking this point back, taking this match back. Yeah, I think we'll see an early EMP shatter uh, from Havoc here. Um, yeah, or maybe, I don't know, maybe they'll try to save the EMP to try to counteract the beat, but I definitely think they're going to want to look for an EMP shatter to just completely shred them like when they think they're safe within their Winston bubble. Yeah, that EMP shatter can be absolutely massive and they're just gonna go behind you want to get that monk that, that winston off that high ground his name he does have a name i did want to point that out that's why i corrected mm -hmm. myself his name is winston but right now havoc is just gonna right now they're just gonna somewhat flip spawns and they're just gonna trade on that courage gonna be nano a pulse bomb thrown out and amitra is gonna bring out that is to bring out that beat drop same with god slayer as dunzo is gonna get hooked off the edge that's one of the big things that yang and that roadhog bring on this map You're coming out at 93 percent you have to win this fight and it seems with voltage able to find two that they are and you've got to hold this you do have you've got the bomb you've got the pulse bomb and you've got the shatter you need to ration those out till the end of this match yeah, I really liked uh, Havoc's pathing on that last fight, where they basically were going all the way around trying to deny the, the Ana and the uh, the Widow the high ground that they've been loving this, throughout this entire fight. Right now, Voltage, the main DPS, is taken out, but a High Noon is going to pressure so much when your shield gone, and the bomb is just going to get disposed by Yang. It's nothing to them. And right now, it's a Lucio and a Diva against the world. And Lucio going to try to find a boot, but nothing going to happen. 96% ticking to the end. And barring nothing, they're going to touch. Wrap it up. You just got to win this fight. And this round is yours. Yeah, I definitely think they're going to win this. Close it out with style. They have one ult, which is the primal. They can stall pretty much infinitely with that. And there's not a whole lot that uh, Havoc has here. I think at this point, it's just about closing it out. But Nerdables does find Mimic. That's a main healer gone. But his Nerdables is going to be demeked. Velzen going to try to throw themselves on the point. And no such thing. We're at 1-1 going into Village for the Transcendence Tier Preseason Tournament Finals. I think Havoc takes this. That map favors the chaos, crazy, WTF style of play that... Uh, We've been seeing from Wrap It Up all night. I definitely think that this is going to favor the more brawl style that uh, Havoc has been dominating with. Not dom, no, I guess I wouldn't say dominating, but they've been winning. With. So, I, I, I think I think this is very favorable for Havoc. And right now, we're going to see DC on that Pharah. They've been deadly from above. But once again, Voltage has deadly aim with a big iron on his hip. And Velzen going to be on that May. That May is absolutely crucial on Village Map as you're able to wall such big parts of the point. But Courage and Voltage find Draft Dodge. At this point, it's been like eight seconds immediately. Have it. It takes the fight in their control. And they should take this point. They say, you have a pharmacy? Well, we'll just kill the rest of your team while you guys are all flying around doing nothing. So they actually swap off the pharmacy there. They're going uh, Lucio and Hanzo, looking to 
combat what the what havoc's throwing at them. Yeah, voltage actually 70% to that high noon. And I think getting off that pharmacy is a really smart idea. Voltage absolutely been destructive. And he's just gonna be out of the equation as Giraffe Dodger is gonna find him. They have been absolute equals on each other tonight, but Yang gonna find the hooks onto a Mitra. These players have been popping off tonight. Each one shining their mechanical and individual skill that is allowing their team to succeed on both sides. Yeah, this is this is a an absolute slugfest. It's it is an absolute show of mechanical skill, brain power, and everything you'd want in an Overwatch match. Gosh, it's it's definitely one for the ages. Transcendence tier, the best Overwatch that you can find in Tranquility. As right now, Voltage wants to find something, and but he's not. But that anti actually is going to be able to take out Yang. I mean, crucial that. And, but Voltage does find two there. And McCree is going to be trading. Voltage Ooh. finds three. But Yvelzen and Amitra are going to be pushing out the rest as only Elusive survives. And it's really not going to do too much. Yeah, I really like that play uh, Havoc had. They came out the high ground. They, they speed boost of an ulti McCree. People don't really think a McCree's gonna move most of the time when he's ulting, and so it really kind of, you know, makes you have to path to a weird area when you see him power strut into the side, telling you what time it is. <laughs> well, it could be 12 o'clock, you never know. <laughs> but Yang and Ojang are just gonna be going to the side, but Yang gonna take out that main and Giraffe Dodger. Once again, these McCrees are just having a field day at each other. But right now, with about 60%, they should be trading this out. And that Shadow not going to find anything. It's interesting ult from Dunzo. As right now, it's just, you can't tell who can take this at this point. Yeah, this is... Every single fight, it seems like the attacker's winning. It's, this is, this is, this is insane. I, I'm sorry, I say that too much. But we, we have uh, probably, I'm going to, I'm assuming we're going to see a Nano Reinhardt come into this one. Maybe a Nano Diva just for that explosion damage on these fat boy characters, but... Voltage. Ooh, he wants to find something, but he is not gonna find. He's gonna deny that kill, that kill that he so desperately wants. But Havoc are just gonna take this point, and they're so close to taking it. With almost no pressure from wrap it up. These beat drops are gonna be chat. And he's gonna be traded, and Havoc's gonna split it with almost identical percentage, 70%. You either gotta lose the fight here or win it here, and it seems that they have to back up. 75% and counting. It's getting so close to the witching hour for Havoc in his last fight territory. You've got about three ults coming up from Wrap It Up and Courage. He wants to find a massive amount of eliminations with that bomb. Oh, he wants, with only the Winston shield to protect, he could have a juicer on his hands. And it seems Ojang is just gonna have to drag people back to the point as the bomb does not find anything. But there we go, the overtime wick starts to burn. And are we gonna see an absolute brawl on the point? Voltage does find God Slayer. That's a big pick from the opening, but the frozen monkey is just a free pick waiting to happen. Draft Dodger does find courage. That's one of your off tanks that's one able to eat Yang's, ult Yang's ultimate who finds two Voltage, Amitra, and there it is. It seems that right now, wrap it up. He's able to flip it again. The attackers are just completely dominating each fight. But we're seeing havoc come through this time. Velzen got that Blizzard Nerdables, got that Nano. And these have to be crucial match winning ultimates. This this Blizzard is going to be able to deny almost the entire point. They're almost going to uh, wrap it up. almost going to have to sacrifice someone to contest this point uh, if they're not too careful. Uh, because they're just going to probably try to cross this blizzard on point and deny it as soon as it gets down to overtime. There we see Yang in the back is going to be able to de-mech Courage, but Voltage does find Ojang, and they're going to flip it. Voltage finds two on God Slayer. Here comes the blizzard. This could be a blizzard to win it all, and it seems that they're so close in Havoc as the overtime <laughs> win burns. Havoc are your transcendence tier champions with a reverse sweep over wrap it up that that play was awesome i love i uh, as a may player from last season in the the harmony tier i love seeing may may blizzards because there's a lot of brains that go into them besides just like trashing it out on point right there Velzen threw it off to the side of the point 
and it allowed, uh, which is where everyone was standing off the point, and it forced Draft Dodger to have to go on a massive flank all the way around point to try to touch, and wasn't able to do it. And I think, I think it was meant to happen. I'm hoping, because I don't want to go too big brain if it didn't. But that 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 so many good plays from every team. That was I lo- that was a great game. Yeah, and if you if you heard it, didn't see it. Yang actually got the legendary vote for her hook accuracy. Cook's gotten, I mean, I personally, he played amazing. Everybody on both sides played amazing. And I think wrap it up. If you wrap it up, don't hang your heads. You put out a wonderful performance. You showed everybody in tranquility that really you're kind of scary. You've got so much great players on your team and you work together and your synergy and you could go far. Yeah, this have wrap it up they're running this strange comp (laughs) at least it's strange to me and they're still (laughs) performing out of their minds on it i i would love i'm excited to see what the season has in store for them yes we do have the first week of tranquility season four next week i'm so excited to see what all these teams have to offer not just the preseason teams not the teams that we've seen not just the teams that we've seen out go out early. You know, we haven't seen too much. But, you know, finally an all-out brawl from the Transcendence tier, Harmony tier, Discord tier. It's going to be so exciting. Yeah, it's a great season ahead of us. Love the addition of the Transcendence tier. It's giving top, top-tier top play a really a, a nice little community to, like, grow. I don't know. I This is this is going to – this is my first match watching live, and – my god i had a blast yeah so make sure you tell mallard how great he did personally i know that mallard did an absolutely wonderful job for the first time as a caster and i hope that you continue to do this man yeah i mean uh i would be a little bit more inclined to do it more if i got flamed a little bit so everyone uh (laughs) at me and say you're bad and i'll uh i'll feel a lot better after (laughs) Yeah, I just want to let you guys know that for the Discord tier Transcendence Finals, Eclipse did beat Caliber 3-1. to one. So we, we don't know the Harmony tier yet, but Eclipse and Trans- Eclipse and Havoc are your preseason champions, at least right now. But I'm LightRose. You can follow me at, at LightRose17 on Twitter and at LightRose on Twitch and Mallard. Uh, I'm the Mallard. Twitch.tv slash Mallard underscore tv um and i'm in the process of setting up my twitter right now so i don't have that for you yet yeah well you'll see that soon and i hope you join us for the iris podcast and our first week of matches which come up very soon next week we'll see you all next time Bye bye And I want y'all to come on down to Crazy NPC's Tranquility Jersey Discount Emporium, where I've got all your Tranquility Jersey needs. You want jetpack cats? I got it. You want fighting taters? I got them too. You want boo? You guessed it. I got it right here. You want deals on teams that are rank- ain't around no more? That's okay. I got meteors. I got gravity. I got undead battery. I got them all. Just head on down to Crazy NPC's Tranquility Jersey Discount Emporium down here at 6969 Grove Street, just south of Davis Avenue in the heart of downtown Los Santos. Or you can shop online at shop.spreadshirt.com slash owtranquility and get them jerseys shipped right to your door. But wait, I ain't done. Are you one of those emo kids that wears a hoodie even when it's 90 degrees outside? Well, I got hoodies. You want to stay up until 4 a.m. playing that one last game, and then you still have to get up at 7 a.m.? I got coffee mugs. I got all your Tranquility merchandise at a discount down here at NPC's Tranquility Jersey Discount Emporium. Come on down here and get your jerseys. I got comets. I got Maelstrom. Heck, I even got shirts with my own head on it. Woo-wee, that's one handsome shirt. You wear a shirt like this, you'll be on your third girlfriend by the end of the week. So what are you waiting for? Get on down here yourself and get a Tranquility Jersey, and that's for me, Crazy NPC. Order online today with your Visa, MasterCard, American Express, or Discover. Save up to 20% by ordering online between February 12th through 14th. Free girlfriends not guaranteed.